What's up everybody? This is Nick from Android Headlines. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a little something special. We went to the OnePlus 2 event in San Francisco just yesterday, and I got a little hands-on with the phone, more like a five-hour hands-on. So, I got some pretty good time with the phone, and I wanted to give you a little overview of exactly how Oxygen OS, which is OnePlus's flavor of Android, has progressed over these past couple of months. So if you'll remember, a couple months ago, OnePlus announced that it had its own version of Android called Oxygen OS. It's basically like a normal manufacturer skin, if you will. It has its own features, it has its own little look. Um, when it first came out, though, it really just looked like a stock version of Android. It wasn't necessarily anything special. Uh, there wasn't any extra features. It wasn't a different look to Android. It was just Android 5.0 running on the OnePlus One, developed straight from OnePlus. So OnePlus assembled an expert team of people that have been working on ROMs like Paranoid Android and maybe some other ones that you've heard about. You can look up the team on our site or around the web, but basically this is just a really cool group of people that love to work on Android. They've been making customized Android software for a long time, and now we're going to check out what they've been working on since then. We set the OnePlus 2 up to use the fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone. So the first thing you notice is the fingerprint sensor, which is really fast and really accurate. The launcher, right in the front, looks like Google Now Launcher at first. But on the left side, you'll notice it's not Google Now. Rather, it's a frequent apps and contacts page, which seems like it's going to have more added to it in the final version. Of course, there's always going to be updates that could add more than that as well. So we will see. But again, number of customization options here are looking pretty good. The face buttons by default are back in overview, so we have no stupid menu button on here, thankfully. Notification shade and many other visual things are very much stock Lollipop 5.1, including the quick Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection pieces that will keep you from having to go into additional dialogues in order to quickly connect to other Wi-Fi hotspots. Diving into the settings menu, you might be surprised by just how much feature parity there is with Cyanogen OS. So as far as buttons go, you can either use the on-screen buttons, as in stock Android, or the capacitive buttons found on the face of the OnePlus 2. So you can swap them, turn the backlight on and off, whatever makes you happy, you can pretty much do here. Off-screen gestures are back, and they're going to be the same as on the OnePlus 1. So things like turning the music on, toggling the flashlight, etc. Under display and sound options, there don't appear to be anything specific to the OnePlus 2 that you'll not find in stock Android. Since there's no NFC, the fingerprint reader is only used to unlock the phone, so there's not much of a point in going in that. Uh, theming, though, is a bit different this time around, as it's not Cyanogen's theme engine. Rather, a custom in-house solution, which lets you choose between dark and light backgrounds, plus a selection of colors for accents and notification lights. This is a system-wide theme, so you're going to find this theme applied everywhere on the phone rather than maybe in just one or two supported apps. So anything that uses the stock backgrounds and stock colors found on the system are going to be changed here. Uh, you can also change various notification lights as you'll see here. You'll notice that there's nothing in particular related to the fingerprint sensor under security settings. However, the OnePlus 2 does feature proper per-app permission support, which lets you toggle specific permissions for each app when necessary. So if I don't want Airbnb to use the camera or any other app to use another specific permission like GPS or something else, you can go ahead and turn that off for each app. It's a nice little feature that we usually only see on Chinese ROMs. Now we're going to go into the camera a bit since that's a big important part of the phone. So this new app looks a lot like the iOS camera and Google camera had a baby. Um, very much a stock iOS looking interface until you start diving into the features which work just like Google Camera. Many of the features from the OnePlus One are retained here with some additions and exclusions. Clear image, HDR, slow motion, and time lapse recording are all here, as well as 4K video recording. This isn't the final version of the software, and it's received some significant improvements since the original Oxygen OS release a few months ago. And a OnePlus software engineer at the event assured me there's plenty of bug fixes and feature additions happening before release. You'll notice that there's not a whole lot here in the settings thing. The shutter speed on auto is pretty good, but it's not quite instant. HDR is quick again, but it's not instant as some sensors are able to do. Whether or not this will be improved by the time the phone launches will have to be seen. 
Clear Image makes a comeback and is definitely faster on the OnePlus 2 than it was on the OnePlus 1. We will have a full camera review coming for you in the next couple of days, so keep an eye out for that for some more in-depth look at the camera on the OnePlus 2. Just like with the previous phone, the OnePlus 2 features a killer audio chipset inside, with some even more killer audio tuning software to accompany it. This time around it's even more full featured, and has a nice little software touch like previews above your thumb, things that make adjustment easier. If you ever use the one on the OnePlus One, you'll note that anytime you change it, you really can't see what you're doing because your thumb gets in the way. There's a lot of new options here that are worth noting, including additional max audio features that weren't seen on the OnePlus One. You'll notice a number of other software packages such as Materialistic, VLC, ViscoCam, SwiftKey, and more. Whether or not these will all be in the final version of the software is to be seen, but so far Oxygen OS has impressed us on the OnePlus 2. It's super fast, seems to have a lot of features, but not too many features, and in general, works really well. We had a great time with the OnePlus 2, and we look forward to giving you a full review in a couple weeks. See you later.